Naš planet Zemlja pružuje uvjete za život raznim biljnim i životinskim vrstama. Čak i nama, ljudima. Znanost nam govori da je te uvjete podarilo sunce. Kad je čovjek postao čovjekom teško izračunati, ali sigurno je da je to bilo davno. Ljudi su stvarili civilizacije, one su se razvijale, nazadovale i napredovale, uzdizale se i propadale. Zemlja se neprestano mijenja. Samo sunce ostaje isto i neprekidno se mijenja. U sve naše kreativne sposobnosti, umne i tehnološke mogućnosti, projekte putovanja na druge planete i istraživanje svemira, život na Zemlji ne bi bio moguć bez sunca. A ljude od uvijek zanimalo što je zapravo ta svakodnevna nebeska pojava koja zrači toplinu i svjetlost. The sun is a machine for turning matter into light. It's self-regulating, providing energy that is stable for billions of years and it's happening in every corner of the cosmos. Ako prihvatimo misao da je sunce živo, ne treba nas čuditi da postoji i biografija sunca. Napisao je David Whitehouse, engleski astronom i pisac te član Kraljevskog astronomskog društva. Od znanstvenika starih civilizacija koji su umovali o prirodi sunca, danas najviše znamo o Grcima, jer su ostavili pisane tragove. No i starije civilizacije ispredale su priče o suncu. Ono je bilo njihov bog, sat, kalendar, njihov prijatelj. Do nas su te priče stigle zamotane u omotač mitologije. Along with the sun came life. So the sun became a symbol of life. It became eventually a symbol of eternal life because it kept, it kept coming back every day. The sun seemed to be struggling during the night. It disappeared, it seemed to go away, went into a cave. And for several hours, the night hours, uh, they envisioned, the ancients envisioned that the sun was in a battle for its life, for its very life. And that finally, in the morning, it had won the battle and it was resurrected from the death of night. And of course there's a difference between the summer solstice and the winter solstice. How much difference that makes in terms of the, the length of day depends on your latitude. But if you're at a reasonably high latitude, then um, days become really very short at the winter. Now, the winter solstice tends to be a more critical time because of course that's, that's the time when the days are getting shorter and shorter, the, the, it's getting colder, um, everything has died and you've, you've had your harvest and so on. That is the time when you need to start the process of regeneration. And so in many, in many societies, it's that winter solstice time when you need to start doing whatever ceremonial activity is required in order to start um, the sun coming back again and to get things growing and, and, and starting for the new season. Some of the most fascinating work that John Ott did had to do with the type of lighting that children were learning under in the types of schools and classrooms that all of us see every day. He noticed that in classrooms that had children that were hyperactive and had difficulty paying attention, reading and learning, when you change the lighting in those classrooms to full spectrum fluorescent tubes, which more closely simulated daylight and sunlight, many of these children calmed down. Many of them were able to pay attention better, learn better, and in general their learning experience was dramatically different. They even noticed a very, very significant uh, drop in the number of dental caries or cavities in these children that were actually in classrooms with light that was more closely simulating daylight.
Sultan. Eu sou a Anil e eu ali o Miro. Isso é... Né? We are here at the sun's behest. The earth shivers against the forces that the sun can unleash. It can change climatic zones. It can make deserts out of green lands. And it can alter the fate of civilizations, perhaps even our own.